All right, let's jump into it. Technical analysis, the basics. Before I get into the session, uh, this entire day is sponsored by our compliance department. Uh, you will get this disclaimer on each session. I do need to share that trading involves risk and that may not be appropriate for everyone, that any trading decisions you make are solely your responsibility at your own risk. And then please, we're gonna be talking about a lot of different things today. We're even going to be demonstrating a platform and talking about some products. Don't take anything we say today as a buy or sell recommendation. This is a day of education. We're doing this for your education. It's important that you understand that. All right, and what is our agenda for the day? Uh, or at least, I'm sorry, for this session. Here's what we're going to cover in the basics. First of all, we have a lot of people who are new to Nadex, might not even be familiar with who Nadex is. I'm going to spend just a couple of minutes on letting you know who Nadex is, the folks that are running this particular education day. Then we're going to start stepping into some of this content technical analysis. And I understand that we've got people that are across the spectrum in terms of knowledge. We've got to start at the beginning, and I want to give you a foundation in technical analysis. Where does it even come from, and what does it mean? When we People throw around, oh, technical analysis, and you're going to go, well, what the heck is that? I'm going to tell you what technical analysis is, and then you're going to go, great, why do I care? And then I'm going to explain why you care. So where does it come from? What does it mean? Why do you care? And then how can you start using it? Right? And we're going to talk about candlestick charts. We're going to talk about other things in technical analysis like trends, reversals, support, resistance, channels, all things that you may be familiar with or you may have heard these terms and you're going to get a basic understanding of what they are. You'll, it will help you throughout the day, particularly the next session where uh, one of my colleagues, Michael Boutros, is going to step into intermediate technical analysis and really start digging into it. Uh, I'm also going to talk about indicators and drawing tools just as a, to open up the concept because that, that is actually how you apply technical analysis. So we're going to give you, we're going to ramp you up pretty quickly uh, if you're not familiar with technical analysis at all. If you're somewhere where you've started that already, we're going to quickly probably find where you are in your learning curve. And lastly, I am going to do a practical demonstration. My mom is from the great state of Missouri or Missouri, the show me state. I find that it really helps if, if I show it to you. Uh, often it will resonate better when you see it right in front of your face. Now, before I go any further, I do want to tell you this is an interactive session. This is interactive. Uh, if you look on your console in front of you, you have a questions section. Please type questions in. I already see a bunch of questions coming in. Now, we've got a crew in the background that is going to make best efforts to answer all those questions. However, if we do not get to your question, I guarantee you someone will follow up with you in the next couple days and everyone will get a personal response to any questions you type in. So please interact with us. We are here to help you. And if for some reason we're not able to get to it, we will follow up with you, type in questions. I'm also gonna mention this quickly, is that if you would like any of the slide decks from today, you can email customer service at Nadex. I will mention that at the end of this session. I will mention it throughout the day. Again, because we're probably going to get a lot of requests, we will get those responses to you as quickly as we can. Don't expect them in your email box immediately, but we will, uh, if you want the slide decks, if you've got questions, type it into the question section. We will definitely follow up with you as quickly as we can. Now, let's get into uh, this presentation because I want to make sure I finish on time and give you a break before we step into intermediate technical analysis. Now, first up, who is Nadex? Uh, you know, you, we, we invited you here. We love the amount of, I mean, we've got so many people that have joined us, uh, a little overwhelming. It felt great. It's exciting. Uh, so we do have quite a crew today and a lot of people who are new to Nadex might not be familiar with who we are. And Nadex stands for North American Derivatives Exchange. So Nadex is short for North American Derivatives Exchange. And what are we? We are a regulated exchange. 
and I want to emphasize regulated. We are regulated by the Commodities and Futures Trading Commission. That is, the CFTC is the same regulator that regulates other larger exchanges, which you might be familiar with. For instance, the Intercontinental Exchange, who owns the New York Stock Exchange. They reported to the CFTC. The Chicago Mercantile Exchange, which is an amalgamation of all a bunch of different Chicago exchanges, the Chicago Board of Trade, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, they report into the CFTC as well. So we are a proper regulated exchange in the United States. It is an entirely electronic exchange. Now, what is it that we offer that's different than other exchanges is we developed contracts that were specifically designed for individual retail traders. So a lot of the exchanges, when they built their contracts, they were actually built for large players uh, as, a, as a financial hedge. I mean, they are very large contracts that require uh, large amounts of margin, initial margin or maintenance margin, and it's thousands of dollars. And uh, there is, uh, unlimited essentially risk in a lot of those contracts. We designed contracts for the retail trader that have a very low cost to entry. And every contract Nadex offers has defined risk, defined reward. It is very clear what you could potentially make or what you could potentially lose. And since each contract is fully collateralized, that concept of margin doesn't exist at Nadex. There is no margin, margin calls, right? You are going to have to put up uh, money. That's a, you're going to have to collateralize the contract you trade, uh, which is essentially how much you could potentially lose. But our contracts are very small. The notional value of our contracts can be as small as $100 or as large as $600. Very, very small contracts designed for retail traders in a properly regulated environment. And the products that we offer, by the way, they're binary options, call spreads, and knockouts. All right? And now if you're not familiar with those, I will actually show you when I jump over to the platform where you can get some education on what those products are. We've got plenty of content and education, but you're probably familiar with some of these concepts, you just don't know it. But these are products that Nadex offers, binary options, call spreads, and knockouts. In fact, we are one of two properly regulated binary options exchanges in the United States. There is a second one that is very, very small that offers weather contracts and does not do, do a lot of volume. So we are the premier binary option exchange in the United States. Now, if you were interested in binary options and you went online, you might find some offshore alternatives where you could access binary option markets through an offshore exchange, but that is not a regulated exchange in the United States. So in that regard, I would say caveat emptor, buyer beware, because if you were to have any issues or challenges and you wanted some type of recourse, good luck to you. Nadex is regulated by the CFTC and we have strict rules that we'd have to adhere to just like the other large exchanges in the United States. All right, that's enough about Nadex. I wanted just to give you an idea of who we are and what we offer. And I will point out, if you're looking for resources to learn more about that, I will show you where you can get that in a bit. I want to get into technical analysis, the basics. So the first question is, is where does technical analysis even come from? And here I'm going to spend just a couple minutes on a little bit of a history lesson because I think it's interesting. All right, I find it. I think it's kind of fun. I love looking at history and uh, a lot of times it, it's nice to be able to look back at where these things came from. So I'm going to put a name out there, Charles Dow. Now you may be, you may be um, familiar with that name. You might recognize his name, but Charles Dow uh, did, had some pretty interesting accomplishments in his life. And you could see he lived in the mid 1800s, died at the turn of the century. All right. So Charles Dow, first of all, in 1882, he co-founded with Edward Jones a company called Dow Jones and Company. You might recognize the name Edward Jones as well. And what they had initially done is they were journalists, and they were offering little 
leaflets um, for analysis on the markets that was a totally independent source. And at the time, it was rather interesting because a lot of journalists back then could be bribed into talking up a particular asset. Uh, but uh, Mr. Dow and Mr. Jones wanted to run something that was t entirely independent and uh, that, that gave the news out, but they had a little leaflet that they put together and they founded Dow Jones and Company. Eventually, when it started to grow into something a little bit more material, they realized they were onto something and they put together a proper newspaper. And it was in 1889 that they launched the Wall Street Journal. So an interesting guy, Charles Dow, uh, along with Edward Jones, but how they started off as a little boutique journalist company, Dow Jones and Company, uh, that eventually evolved into a, a, a full-blown media entity uh, for the financial services space and launched the Wall Street Journal. But Charles Dow even went a little further. He did a lot of studies on the market. And in order for him to, um, give me one second, something is going wrong with my screen. And I want to, and I'm not sure why that happens. Give me one second, I apologize. This, there we go. Okay, we're back. I apologize. All right, so in his in his studies, uh, for wanting to analyze markets, uh, Charles Dow created the Dow Jones Industrial Average. We're all familiar with the Dow Jones Industrial Average. In fact, we often use it as a benchmark to uh, look at how we think the U.S. economy is performing, even though the markets are different than the economy. But he put together this, this mathematical calculation to look at the markets so that he could do something, he could do analysis. And really, this is where Charles Dow did something interesting. In his analysis, he came up with a theory. It is called Dow theory, right? And what is Dow theory? Dow theory was a set of principles that Charles Dow put together where you could try to understand and analyze market behavior. This is the foundation for technical analysis. Charles Dow is considered the father of technical analysis. Now, what is it that these principles espoused? All right, what is the concept behind Dow theory and technical analysis? And the one of the core tenets, one of the core principles of Dow theory, and I'm not going to go through all of them, I'm going to pick just a couple of them, is that markets are efficient. Right? And what that means is that all news about a company, all fundamental information about a company's balance sheet, cash flow, financial statements, uh, all, of, all of that their sales inventory, all of their costs, all of that information is publicly available and is immediately discounted in the price of a stock. So when you look at a price of a stock, everything that is out there, all news that is out there is already incorporated into the price. So what is it that you would really be wanting to look at in order to understand movements in a stock's price, all right? And this is where, Charles Dow started getting uh, into what, became, what has now become technical analysis. And what he did is he took the price of an asset, all right, and this is what he started doing. This is why he created the Dow Jones Industrial Average, is it gave him a price point, a number that you can put on a chart. All right, now we're getting into charts. And you could take price movement and plot it on a chart. And when then you look at a chart, there would be patterns that could be identified, that you would actually see certain patterns in the market when you looked at the price movement of an asset or of a stock or of anything. And really what was driving these prices, because once the news is out, yes, a stock may make a move. So there's always that event 
occurrence when more news becomes available to the public, but immediately that would get digested and reflected in the price of an asset. But what really drives the price of a stock is supply and demand. And that is the market behavior that is the foundation for technical analysis. And this is a core tenet of Dow theory. All right? And this is where what drives technical analysis. And what you would see is prices would move and then they would they would shift. And really what was shifting was a shift in supply and demand. So and when we say supply and demand, there was a certain amount of stock or float out there and there's a, a set number in an asset and demand is what would drive the movements in price. If there were all of a sudden a lot of people looking to buy, they would drive the price of an asset up. But if they drove it up to a certain point, at which point sellers come in, the supply demand equation would change, sellers might come in, and then you might actually see a change where now sellers step in and they start pushing the price of an asset lower. And so you would look at these chart patterns, all right, because you're plotting the price movement on a chart, and that you would see these patterns and that these patterns would be repeatable, that it's something that you could look at and then try to identify different types of behavior for your analysis in the markets. So that begets the question, why do you care about any of this? Right? Why do you care if somebody's plotting and looking at all this? What is it that a trader would be looking for? What would help make you a better trader if you understood technical analysis? And this is exactly what you're trying to accomplish with technical analysis as a trader, is you want to take advantage of being able to read a chart and identify some of these price patterns. What are these patterns? And if you could identify them and you could identify specific trends, all right, ooh, we are in an uptrend. Oh, look, we are in a downtrend. And when those trends reverse, all right, we'll call it a reversal in trends. And there's certain buzzwords that you may hear, a retracement, meaning it trended in a certain way and then it pivoted and started to retrace and go back to where it came from. Uh, the other terms we often hear is it bouncing off of a level often meaning it bounces off a lower level and it starts to go higher or pullbacks where it bounces. It's essentially the other way. It goes to a high level and starts to pull back from those high levels. But as a trader, you're looking to identify those trends and then take advantage of those trends in a profitable way. Now in the industry, uh, there's a saying and I'll put it out there. The trend is your friend. Don't fight the trend. Your opinion, you can, I mean, you can have an opinion on a particular asset and how it's going to perform. Uh, you may do your analysis. We're gonna even be talking about fundamental analysis later. Uh, and we're gonna do a deeper dive into technical analysis, but understanding that these trends tend to go a certain way, uh, it's like fighting City Hall. Do you really wanna fight the trend? Do you wanna get on the train or do you wanna stand in front of it? And so often traders are looking for these patterns, identify these trends, and try to ride them for as long as they can. And so what you're really looking to do, and in the end, this is what it really encapsulates, and this is technical analysis and why you care, is you're looking for these price changes. You're looking to identify potential entry points and exit points. All right. And we are going to be talking about that later and specifically, you know, how you can incorporate that into a trading plan. And ultimately what that means is where do you, you're going to look at technical analysis. You're going to identify these patterns. You're going to be looking for something where you go, when this happens, I usually tend to see this happen. So I'm going to do A or I'm going to do B. And you're looking for an opportunity to enter the market. So, hey, where do I find my entry points? This is where I want to get in, where I think it will be a profitable trade because I think this is going to happen. Uh, but you'll also use that to identify exit points. And when you say exit points, there's two types of exit points. There's, hey, 
I think this is going to happen until here. That's where I want to get out and take my profit. All right. And that is actually, we're going to talk about that in trader psychology. We're going to talk about that in a trading plan, but having a clear, defined exit strategy to take profits. The saying is, is you know, traders don't go broke ringing, ringing the cash register. You have to have a clear idea of where you're going to get out for a profit and say, thank you. And I'm going to move on to my next trade. But you also have to manage your risk. Uh, you could be looking at technical analysis and you might want to go. And if this happens, uh, OK, I, I, I might have misread the chart. Get out. I'm wrong. I want to stop my losses uh, and get out and then reassess. So people use or traders use technical analysis to I look for patterns in the marketplace, identify these patterns and find a place where they might want to enter a trade and when once they're in where they would exit either to uh for profit or as a stop loss all right now that's the foundation for technical analysis i want to go a little further and again this might be rudimentary for some people but it's really important that if you if you don't understand the very basics it's going to be very difficult for you so i'd like to talk about candlestick charts because it tends to be the most popular type of chart there are variations on this that essentially are the same thing but they might look a little different um, now these are two candles okay and i want to talk about what each candle is uh, notice that there are two candles why is that there are two different colors now do they have to be green which is the green ones on the left the red ones on the right for those folks who might be colorblind they don't have to be green and red they can be any colors you want it's just that you'd want to have two distinctly different colors when you look at a candlestick right how do you actually read a candlestick is the box that you see that's colored in that identifies where and, and and when we look at a candlestick it's going to be over a period of time and when you use candlestick charts you'll see that you'll have options one minute five minutes 10 minutes 15 minutes 30 minutes an hour two hours you could do weekly or monthly candlesticks that candlestick represents a period of time each candlestick is a period of time and you've got to determine what period of time that is let's assume we're using a five minute candle okay each candle represents five minutes all right now when you look at that candle if it's green if it's green that means at the bottom of that candle that is where it opened during that five minutes and the top of the candle is where it closed at the end of that five minutes now if in that little window in that five minute window if the close was below the open it would be a red candlestick so the one on the left the green candlestick it opened it traded in a range it closed but it closed higher than where it opened it's a green candlestick and on the right it's a red candlestick. It opened, it traded in a range during that five minutes. It closed, the close was below where it opened. So it's a red candlestick. Now notice on each candlestick, there's a wick. It's called a wick at the top and the bottom. And that wick identifies what the high of the range was in those five minutes. And the bottom wick is the low. Now, interestingly enough, there's not necessarily always a wick. Uh, in fact, there could potentially be no wick above and below. If it opens and it trades up and it closes higher, uh, and it that's and the and the and there it never traded higher than where it closed, and it never traded lower than where it opened, you'll just have a plain green box with no wicks. But a full candlestick you need to be aware that there's the the body of the candlestick that's the body and then there might be wicks above and below if it traded lower than the bottom of the body or a wick above if it traded higher than the body hopefully i was pretty clear on that but that is very important it is a basic fundamental i need to be able to look at a candlestick to understand it now what happens this is one single candlestick this is a single data point 
This is in five minutes. Let's take a look at what happens when you're trying to piece all of these candlesticks together. All right, and you put a bunch of candlesticks. Now you're going to be look. We're going to be talking about trends and time frames. All right now, when I say time frames, what are we talking about? Are we talking about a short-term time frame, or are we talking about a long-term time frame? All right, and that means, and there are two different time components to a candlestick chart. All right, now, I just put, put up a candlestick chart. You're looking at a candlestick chart, and uh, it's got a bunch of little candles in there. You can see, uh, and now, it doesn't matter. Let's assume, let's just go that these are 30-minute candlesticks. So each candlestick represents 30 minutes. Okay, and then you can see there's a whole bunch of candlesticks in there. So there might be, uh, this might be 10 hours. This, this chart might be 10 or 15 hours of time. All right, so that's the two time components I'm talking about. Each candlestick and then the series of candlesticks. And if I looked at this little chart, I, I might come to the conclusion, hey, look at this trend. In this period of time, in this 10 hours, I'm looking at it and it looks like it's in a downtrend, right? I mean, you can clearly see uh, it starts in the upper left-hand corner. We end in the bottom right-hand corner and you might just go, yeah, this isn't a downtrend. This thing's going down. But then the question is, let's take a step back, okay? Let's, let's go back a step and say, how, what time frame am I looking at? Yeah. You have to give me a second. My screen is doing it again. I'm not sure why. Okay, there we go. We are back. Apologize. And so, one, we have to look at the time interval for each candlestick. And then we have to look at the time interval for the entire date range of the chart. So when I look at the upper right-hand corner and I see a downtrend, that is actually, if you look at the, the, the right side of this chart, that is hey, exactly what we're looking at. Todd, it uh, yes. looks like you need to reshare your screen now. Oh, I apologize. Thank you. And I'm not sure why that keeps doing that. Thank you. Point that out to me if that happens, and I'll have to be aware of that all day long. Sure thing. I'm not sure. Um, there, are we good? Thank you, Marcus. Looks good now. Yep, no problem. Okay. All right. Yeah, and and we have technical difficulties. Um, again, we're doing this over the internet, and sometimes uh, things can get a little glitchy. Okay. So, uh, in the upper right hand corner, you can see that this chart. If you look down below, that is exactly what we're looking at. In the last ten hours, we are in a downtrend. But if I back this up and look at the last forty hours, you would look and we're actually in a little bit of an uptrend. So when you're doing technical analysis, your time interval is going to become important. The time interval of your candles, and do I want longer candles? Am I looking at a longer time frame? Now at Nadex, a lot of our products, when we've got binary options that trade in five minutes or 20 minutes, you might want to be using one minute candlesticks. And you might just want to know what's going on in the last 60 minutes. That's all you really care about when you're doing your technical analysis. Other people want to take a longer term view uh, and might want to back up. Let's say you're looking over the course of a week. You might want to use 15 minute candles, maybe 30 minute candles and look at a whole week's worth of time to help you gauge what trend you're looking for. All right, so when you're identifying trends, time frame becomes a very critical component, both of the interval for your candlestick as well as the time frame for your chart. Okay? Now, the next thing I want to show you is, and I, I mean, there are so many that we could do, and there is absolutely no way that I could cover all of it, but I want to give you some just a couple of ideas of what some of these patterns that people look for. These might not be uh, these might not be the patterns you're looking for, uh, and I'm going to show you uh, how many different choices there are. Uh, my colleague Mike Boutros is again; he's going to be getting into a, a much 
deeper dive into a lot of the tools that you might want to look for. But let's just introduce all right, so we've talked about trends where you might be looking for an uptrend. And you can see all I'm looking for is that the price seems to be in incrementally going higher. And it might, uh, it might imply that, hey, I want to be on the long side of this for the moment until it reverses. Or if you see a downtrend, you might want to be on the short side of something until you see it reverse. And when you see it reverse, you want to turn the cards over, as traders would say. I spent a decade on the trading floors. You know, one side of your card was buy, one card of your uh, side of your card was sell. When you see a reversal happening, go the other direction. So two common reversal patterns, the hammer and the hanging man. And I'm going to go through these quickly. Again, I just want to introduce these concepts. And again, it's, I mean, this is going to be a little bit rudimentary, but it's something to get you a little bit more familiar with the concept of technical analysis, charts, patterns, things that you might wanna to try to identify. Um, so let's start with the hammer, okay? Now at, with the hammer, you'll notice on the left side of this little chart, uh, there is, oop, there is uh, a candlestick, all right, that's got a body, there is no wick above. There is no wick above, but there's a longer wick below. And in fact, if you look at, look at it, it might look like a hammer. And there are two types of hammers, all right? There's a green one and there's a red one. The green one is when it the close is higher than the open, and that's where it finishes. Uh, it can also, that hammer, it could open and close, but in a very short range, but it's got a long wick beneath it. Now, when do you see a hammer? you tend to see it in a downtrend, all right? That is what's very important. If you look at the right side of this little picture, we are in a downtrend. We've identified a trend, and all of a sudden we get one candlestick that looks different. One of these candlesticks doesn't look like the others, all right? Just like out of Sesame Street. And now we see a hammer. What that is saying is sellers have hammered this thing down and they, it, it doesn't appear as though they can hammer it anymore and that it might be a reversal time and we'll start to see this come higher. So people do look for a hammer. Notice that a green hammer is a stronger indicator than a red hammer, but this is what technical analysis is. You're looking for these price patterns. You're trying to identify a trend. You're trying to get on that trend and go with it until it reverses, at which point you want to go with the reversal. Another pattern, it looks nearly identical, is called the hanging man. And now these uh, bodies tend to be a little bit smaller than the hammer. All right, you'll notice it's a little thinner. But here's the key difference, because a, a, a hanging man looks nearly identical to a hammer, the difference is it comes at the end of an uptrend. So when you see an uptrend, we're trending higher, we're trending higher, we're trending higher, and then we see this hanging man. Now, in a hanging man, the, the, stronger, the stronger indicator is actually when it, the close is below the open. But this, this is sort of showing that buyers have become exhausted. All right, now we've exhausted buyers and you might be looking for a reversal. So we've been in an uptrend. Uh-oh, maybe buyers are getting exhausted. This might be an opportunity to now to sell. We think the trend is going to reverse and we might want to go short. These are the foundations of technical analysis. All right, so we've talked about trends. We've talked about reversals. All right, and again, I'm, when we're talking about the hammer, the hammer, the hammer is a buy signal. It's a buy signal in a downtrend where we think we're going to see a reversal because we believe sellers have become exhausted. They cannot hammer it down anymore. And the hanging man is actually a sell indicator, a sell signal here, 
we are in an uptrend, the buyers are becoming exhausted, and we think sellers are now going to come in and push the price lower. Now, the other thing I'd like to talk about, um, just in generic technical analysis, beyond trends, beyond reversals, the other, uh, one of the big items for uh, technical analysis for a foundation are things called support and resistance. These are often around true price analysis. Where is it that we see on a chart where buyers historically tend to come in and where sellers historically come in? I pulled a chart of the S&P 500 and I have drew these two levels on a chart. You can clearly see them in gray. Now the lower one is a support level and you can actually see that I mean, back at the beginning of this chart, every time it kind of got into this little range, buyers stepped in, buyers stepped in. It went higher, and then maybe sell, it would come, sellers would come back in, but notice that it kept on being a level of support. Uh, then it got up to this range where it sort of consolidated up there, and it broke through that level, all right? That was a resistance level up above and it kept trading higher. Eventually it came back through that resistance level and that resistance level, and it came all the way down back to our original support. All right, so now we're looking at charts and we're trying to identify, hey, whenever it comes into this level, it tends to be a support level and it's an opportunity to buy. And it appears that it keeps bouncing off of the support level and then it rises up until it hits a resistance level. And you'll see that it hits this resistance level repeatedly. So these are actually what we call channels, all right? And now a channel can be flat. It can also be at an angle. And I'm gonna show you that when we jump over to the platform. But there, here's a channel where we tend to see support at a certain level, and it tends to be a technical indicator that it might be time to buy. And then there's, resistance levels, which would be the ones up above, where it might be an opportunity to sell. And you can see how it kept on hitting that level and it just couldn't seem to get through it again. And it turned out to be a sell level. And it's really rather interesting how these patterns and these levels on your charts might become identifiable for you to look at places where you might want to enter a trade or exit a trade. And here with support and resistance, the support down below is where you might want to enter a trade as a long, and the resistance level above might be where you would want to exit the trade, and it might even be a new entry to enter a short position. Right, So you're constantly analyzing support and resistance levels on a chart. Now, I am going to throw one quick little slightly more advanced subject out here. I know my colleague, Mike Boutros, is going to be dump, jumping into Fibonacci retracements, so I'm not going to do a lot on Fibonacci. It is an interesting ratio that Mike will go into. It is actually a ratio that we see in nature. It is a ratio that you see in the human body. You see it in architecture. And you'll often see, now this is the exact same chart where I had uh, support and resistance levels, but on top of it, I overlaid a Fibonacci retracement. And it's interesting how Fibonacci, and again, Mike will get into it, but I just want to kind of point out that first retracement level on Fibonacci, it's the 76.4, that was our resistance level up above. And um, notice in between that resistance level above and our support level below, all right, there was another little range between 23.6% and between 38.2%. Uh, I highlighted those. Those are actual levels. You do not need to be able to, you don't have to calculate these. We do this for you on the Nadex platform. But what's rather interesting is that 23.6 was a support level uh, even in between these ranges where there was an opportunity to potentially uh, pick up a quick buying opportunity, and that 38.2% kind of acted as a resistance level. So we actually had a support and resistance channel or range inside 
the support and resistance we had drawn, which is a little bit bigger. Again, giving you opportunity for very short term price action to try to, to find profitable trades. Now, I am going to say there this didn't work out perfectly because it didn't always stick between that 23.6 and that 38.2. I mean, there's a couple of other levels where it broke out around them. But notice it was rather interesting. It actually hit the other Fibonacci levels. It it found support at our support level below, but notice um, that first red um, down arrow, when it when it broke up above that 38.2, the 50% price level was a resistance level. So Fibonacci, just a little bit more advanced tool where you can try to identify other support and resistance levels. It is a mathematical calculation. Michael Boutros will cover that much more in depth. I just wanted to put it out there as an idea. All right, now the other thing uh, uh, on the Nadex platform, and I am gonna spend five minutes on the platform so that we could still take a 10 minute break before the next session, but we have got a variety of technical indicators. When we talk about technical analysis, there are so many technical indicators to help you. Uh, and one of the difficult things is choosing the right one. Unfortunately, you're going to have to find the one that's, that, that works best for you. I think we uh, Nadex has 25 to 30 different pre-populated technical indicators built into our charts so that you can put these on a chart. We've even got in-platform education to help you understand the basics of what these things are. Um, th but there are a lot to choose from. Some of the more popular ones, there's Bollinger Bands, which is a mathematical calculation based upon statistical uh, standard deviations. So a, it's a statistical measure, but standard deviations are round moving averages. Uh, moving averages in and of themselves, also very popular. People want to see a moving average, and there's different moving average time frames. And the thought is, it's called reversion to the mean, that if something gets too far above its moving average, it's going to want to eventually come back to that moving average. So if it's above it, eventually it will tail off to come back down to the moving average. If it's below the moving average, eventually it will want to come back up to the moving average. Uh, moving average convergence divergence is a, a MACD, where moving averages are converging together or diverging, spreading apart to identify different trading opportunities. So RSI, relative strength index, I'm just kind of calling out a few that uh, people tend to like to use. Nadex has 25 to 30 of these built into our platform. We've also got a variety of drawing tools. Fibonacci is actually a drawing tool. Uh, and I know that uh, my colleague, Mike Boutros, is going to cover more of these. He'll, I believe he's covering pitchforks um, as well as I think he, you know, trend lines I kind of showed you. There are even channels, which uh, we sort of drew and a channel can be sideways but a channel could be a trend in an uptrend or a channel in a downtrend there are a variety of ways to use technical analysis to read charts and look at charts now i do have to take a step and let you know all right this is really important whenever you're using technical analysis uh, i use the phrase caveat emptor buyer beware if you were going to trade binary options on an unregulated exchange caveat emptor also applies to technical analysis uh, there's a saying in the industry even the titanic had a chart room and how did it end for the titanic i can even broaden that every ship at the bottom of the ocean had a chart room. And if they misread the charts, they sank. <coughs> Excuse me. So it is important to note, charts and technical analysis and reading charts is not 100% accurate. It's a bit of an art form. Um, although there is some science around the mathematics to use some technical analysis, it, this is not a guarantee of, of any sort whatsoever. Um, you know, some people would argue that Charles Dow was crazy uh, and that these patterns don't exist in the markets, but we tend to see them. And there's a lot of people who use technical analysis on their charts. So it's important whenever you're trading, manage your risk. If you're using technical analysis, manage your risk. Now, I am going to put this up here and um, I'm going to mention it now. We'll 
push it out in chat throughout the day. If you've got any questions, any questions whatsoever, email us at customerservice at nadex.com. I'm also going to mention again, you want this slide deck or any of our slide decks throughout the day, email customer service at nadex.com. Now, we will get those to you as quickly as we can. Don't expect them coming to you today. Uh, just as well as all the questions that are getting asked. I mean, I'm seeing so many questions come in. We are trying to answer them all. We will do our best, but I guarantee you, if we do not get your question today, someone will follow up with you, I promise you. Uh, the other thing I'd like to mention, um, follow us on our YouTube channel, um, as well as our other social media. We do a morning technical analysis session every single day, 8 a.m. Central, 9 a.m. Eastern. You can come and join us for 10 or 15 minutes, and we look at hot spots in the markets, and we stream it live on YouTube, and you can you know, start learning how to do some of this technical analysis. I'd also ask you, and I'm just gonna put this out there, if you could give us a review, I like to ask, trustpilot.com slash review slash nadex.com. We would love all reviews and feedback. It would be appreciated. Now, I am going to spend just a couple minutes. I am going to navigate over to our uh, platform uh, very quickly uh, before we take a break. Uh, and I knew that I might have a little, a few challenges because I had to do the housekeeping items uh, up front. And I think I can share this. Okay. All right, you should be, actually, you probably are seeing right now our Nadex YouTube channel. Uh, I'm just gonna point this out. We do, we, there's a, a, a bunch of content out there. Here's our morning analysis from today. You can go back and look at it. Uh, my colleague Travis does a very early morning analysis, quick, one minute, two minutes on news. He does that early every morning. We do this at 8 a.m. Um, so there's a lot out here. This is also where all the recordings will be located. You'll find them here. You will also find them on our website. Uh, you'll find them under the learning section, under webinars. Uh, if you go to the, uh, and by the way, if you're not familiar with knockouts or call spreads, we're going to be doing introduction this Thursday. If you wanna know more about binary options, you can go into the archive. This archive is where we will be putting all of the videos from today. All right, now I'm going to quickly log into the platform. I just want you to be able to see it. Um, I know I don't have a whole lot of time to get into this. I am going to bring up a chart of anything, uh, but I mean, you can see our different products. Uh, let's just take a look at uh, foreign exchange. Let's take a look at the, I think the Euro US dollar might be interesting just because Janet Yellen's been talking um, on her confirmation. I am going to move this aside. Um, I am gonna move the price ticket aside. I just wanna look at our charts, okay? And I just wanna show you that we've got things available to help you on your journey. Uh, you can customize your chart. The time, the time interval of each candlestick, the time interval, the date range that you'd like to see on your chart. Remember, I mentioned those are two important data points when you're building charts is the time frame of your candlestick and the type then the date range of your chart. Uh, we do have a bunch of these indicators that you can simply populate. When I mentioned Bollinger Bands, if I'm not sure what they are, I look at the I for information. It does give me some in-platform education uh, just to give me an idea of what they are. If I click on it, it will, um, oops, I didn't want to click Bollinger Bandwidth. I wanted to click on Bollinger Bands. There we go. And you'll see how it will populate my chart with the Bollinger Band indicator, and I can customize it if I wanna customize it. If I'm looking for drawing tools, you know, I mentioned channels. Let's take off real quickly. Let's take Bollinger Bands off. Uh, I'm going to look at a channel uh, just because I've mentioned it, and uh, let's, let's just take a look, and I'm just gonna play around here quickly. Remember, not buy, sell, or hold. When I click channel, we can see that we were in a down range on uh, a downtrend on, uh, cause the US dollar was getting stronger and stronger and stronger uh, channel. There we go. I, I can put in, you can see how this is kind of where it was hitting highs. I can fix this and where it was hitting lows. I can customize, you know, if I'm not perfect in drawing, 
um, and I'm doing this very, very quickly. But you can see how in this channel, all right, whenever it seemed to get to the top end of the channel, it was resistance, right? And then when it got to the bottom end of this channel, it was support. So when I talk support and resistance, it doesn't have to just be horizontal. It can also, as I mentioned, it could be in a downtrend. And I very well could, as we can see, uh, when Yellen said in part of her testimony that uh, the Fed might start buying more assets to stave off a, a, longer, um, a longer recession, uh, the dollar started getting weak again. Why am I having such a chance? Here we go. Let's try this again. There we go. It's, it started to go into an uptrend. Okay, so I just wanted to show you channels and show you all the variety of tools that are available at Nadex. Um, with that, I do have to take a break here. I do want to give everyone opportunity to stretch their legs. Um, again, we will answer as many questions as we can. Again, if you've got um, any questions for Nadex, customer service at nadex.com, email us. All right, we are going to take a five minute break. Uh, please go stretch your legs, enjoy. Uh, I am going to get set up with my colleague, Mike Boutros. We're probably gonna do a sound check here right now. And I'm gonna turn control over to him and we'll start again at the top of the hour. Uh, thank you again all for joining us today. Uh, let me put up the next title slide so that you know that we are skipping sessions. We'll be back in five minutes. Go ahead and take a break. <laughs>